Welcome to this video on another question to do with atomic absorption spectroscopy and how we use it to determine samples of a pollutant in a water body. Now this question came from a paper um, in the HSC that was looking at the absorbance of phosphate. And this can create a little bit of debate among a lot of teachers um, and uh, chemists because the technique of atomic absorption spectroscopy is dealing with using metal um, hollow cathode ray lamps to measure the concentration of cations, not the concentration of phosphate ions. Now with a bit of googling you'll be able to find that there are techniques, not as straightforward as the ones that we've looked at in these videos, that can measure the concentration of phosphates in a water body um, using spectroscopic um, analyses. Um, but it's normally measured um, by using a colorimeter, um, which has a similar sort of um, setup in the sense of um, measuring absorbance and relating that to concentration, right? But atomic absorption spectroscopy is usually done with metal ions. But this was done in the, done in the paper, so we're going to go through um, with the question and, and look at the answers. But just keep in mind that atomic absorption spectroscopy in reference to the level of detail that you need for, let's say, a New South Wales HSC question, is that it is only used for metal ions and that we um, determine the concentration of phosphates by using um, other methods, right, such as the, uh, the uh, molybdate ascorbic acid complex um, reaction, which makes a blue solution, and then we use a colorimeter to measure the absorbance of the blue solution and compare it to standards. So in that way, it's very similar, right? The concentration has a relationship with the absorbance value, but it's using a chemical reaction to create a colored solution um, that we then measure the intensity of um, absorbance. But anyway, we're gonna just pretend for the moment that uh, you can use atomic absorption spectroscopy to measure the amount of phosphates as was um, indicated in this paper, okay, which is a 2009 paper. So in this paper here, they, they said that there were three streams and that some scientists tested the water in three streams. Now I've just drawn that picture, that wasn't in the paper. So here we have a main stream and then we have three smaller streams branching off from that. And they asked you to calculate the average absorbance. So I've just already done that for you and placed it in the table here. And so they gave you a graph and you had to read from the graph the absorbance value, um, sorry, you had to read the concentration for each of the absorbance values. So let's do the first one, 0 0.09, right down here. Now, of course, with the graph that you have in the paper, it'll be a lot more accurate than what I've just scribbled on the, uh, scribbled just here. And so that turns out to be around about 0.09. 0.03 milligrams per litre. Then if you go 0.513, right, using a ruler, of course, right, that's probably close to maybe 0.8. Okay, so 0. Point, uh, it's 0.15, so it's going to be 1.8. No, sorry, it's going to be closer to 0.2, so 0 0.80. And then 0 0.235, 0 0.235, coming down there, and 0.235 is about 0 0.0. So there we have stream one, let's just write that, that was stream one, then stream two was up here, and then stream three. So you can see here that in terms of the concentrations of the phosphates, uh, the highest is stream two, that's the highest value, 0 0.8 milligrams per litre right, parts per million, and stream one was the cleanest, right, at 0 0.03, and stream three was intermediate, 0 0.085. Now, the question does actually sort of try to get you to try and hypothesize why that might be the case, right? They said the recommended maximum level for phosphate in a stream is 0.1. So the maximum level for safe water quality, which we call potable water, um, but we're drinking this, oh, sorry, we probably won't be drinking this, but 
the safe limits for phosphates to prevent eutrophication of the waterways is 0 0.1 milligrams or parts per million, right? Milligrams per litre. So that's the safe maximum. Well, we can see that that is stream two is well over that. Stream one is getting close to the maximum and sorry, stream three is getting close to the maximum and stream three is crystal clear. And so then they said, um, with reference to the maximum levels, explain why there could be differences between the streams. So this is testing your understanding about well, where do phosphates come from. And phosphates come from fertilizers, right? So phosphate fertilizers. Uh, they come from uh, runoff um, in terms of um, household detergents. So maybe this is so high in stream two because where it was measured you had a farm. I just put an F there for a farm. Old McDonald had a farm. And so we might have fertilizer runoff going into the stream and where it was measured was downstream from that. And so a possible reason why that could be so high was because there was farm fertilizers running into the water. Then we could say that this is intermediate because that might be downstream from um, an urban area where they had um, runoff from detergents. And of course, 0 0.03, nice pristine clean water and so we don't, they don't have to worry about anything at all there so that was the question there okay uh, there was the last part of the question which says why is phosphate concentration um, a water quality issue well phosphates are used as a food source right that is nutrients for algae and so if the concentration of phosphates increases too much, we then have algal growth and algal blooms. And they measure something called the nitrogen phosphate ratio. And um, if there's too much of that, algae use that as a food source for, and they, are, they uh, respire and they grow and they reproduce. And they blow their, uh, you know, their uh, population levels to the point where the water um, undergoes what's called eutrophication. We have a blue-green algae problem. And of course, if there's heaps and heaps of algae in the water, then they're going to be wanting to uh, respire and, um, and in order to grow and to multiply. And respiration is using oxygen, right, to generate energy. And so therefore, the oxygen concentration of the water body goes down. Big, big problem if you are an aquatic um, animal that needs oxygen to breathe, like fish. So uh, that's going to have a, a flow-on effect. Um, it's also going to release toxins into the water as well. So all these algae with their metabolic processes are going to release toxins into the water. Those increase in toxins could be a, a, a problem if you are a farm animal that drinks from that water supply. Um, furthermore, if you have uh, blue-green algae within the water body, you have a covering on the water um, of, of you know, algae and of course, that covering is going to affect light permeability into the water. It's going to affect photosynthetic ability of aquatic plants. If aquatic plants can't photosynthesize, that means they're not going to be replacing the oxygen in the water. And so the oxygen concentration, or dissolved oxygen concentration, goes down even more. So animals then start to die. And then they have decaying bodies and fish floating on the top of the surfaces. So we have a lot of ramifications, a lot of problems that can come from too much phosphates in the water body. Okay, so um, to prevent that, a lot of detergents these days are made with low phosphate or no phosphate in them. And so if they do get runoff into the water body, it's not going to affect too much um, in terms of phosphates. Fertilizers, well, they want to try and make fertilizer with less phosphate in it as well. So that is a quick summary of that question and I'll just write down eutrophication right that's how you spell it right so that is the um, enhancement of nutrients in the body right trophic for you bio people to understand that troph means food okay and you means good and so if we have a good supply of food we then have an over nutrient supply and therefore algae go crazy it's like a party all right so hopefully that makes sense for you um, in terms of reading it but just remember 
atomic absorption spectroscopy is used for metal ions predominantly because you have a hollow cathode tube that uh, releases specific wavelengths of light from those metal ions that's then absorbed by the metals and gives you an absorbance um, value. Phosphates we do in another video, make sure you watch it, which is looking at the colorimeter technique and the absorption of um, light in a colorimeter based on a color reaction between molybdate, ammonium molybdate, um, ascorbic acid and that gives a nice blue complex that we can use to measure its concentration. Hope that makes sense for you, okay? And um, yeah, keep doing your chemistry and I'll see you in another video.